Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings, with me, Greta Chamberlain, and the Realm of Beings. Shifting Impressions, which is one of the vehicles that supports the transmission of the Realm of Beings, is here to assist you in delving into your being by providing numerous topics and discussions for you to intake as you deepen your connection with your inner world. Shifting Impressions is here to assist you in strengthening yourself as you excavate to understand your true nature. Join us today and learn to shift your mindset, shift your thoughts, and shift your focus to recreate your life and produce a new you. Shifting Impressions starts now. Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. We are very happy to be on Transformation Network every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. You can also find us on any streaming platform you choose. Today, we, I'm Lee, where I'm joined with, by Carol and Greta, and as always, the Realm of Beings. We share these conversations uh, as a way to help you examine your life and your creation of reality, to maybe think about what you're creating and how it shows up to transform your life and your reality. So ladies, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Lee. Good morning. If you're new to the podcast, every week we chat about a conversation that, I mean, a quotation that Greta has downloaded from the realm of beings. So this week, the quotation is, seek further knowledge of self and your being. This search will benefit you in learning of existence. So when I first saw that quotation, the first thing that came to my mind was, you know, to be a little curious right? You know, curiosity is a good starting point, I think, right? When we're trying to explore some new parts of ourself and discover what we have within us. What do you ladies think? Hmm. I know, Carol. Carol. I'm looking at, you, looking at Carol. Uh, hmm. I, I took it as being um, open to receiving new knowledge, um, like being more expansive within yourself and being open to new knowledge, to receiving new knowledge. And that will help us learn about our, I mean, the most common question humans have is what is our purpose? Why are we here? So if we open ourselves to receive more knowledge and have a less limiting uh, thought process, I think that helps us become more expansive and understand the creation of reality. Greta? Oh. <laughs> Am I on the right I track? <laughs> you know what, I, I saw the quote in, uh, I just went to the last part of the quote. It's like I'm working myself from the bottom up to the top because the bottom says this search will benefit you in learning of existence. And I, I don't know if uh, the quote can be seen in the, um, to the people that are watching but I want to say that the word existence in this sentence is capitalized. So that existence is not meaning existence while I'm just here. I'm just in this space or the podcast is existing every Friday. That, that's not what that means. With the capital E, it's meaning the force. And it's meaning, what do we mean by the force? We can define it as that creates everything. Everything that exists, now we're using it, exists, is created by the force. And uh, 
so in learning of existence, that sentence is really saying when you search uh, and you, you, as Carol says, you expand your uh, level of consciousness, then you're going to be taking on an understanding of existence with a capital E. What is, what is the existence with a capital E? What does that individual do? Who is that individual? Who is that individual in relationship to me? So it's like seeking further knowledge of self and your being. You know, when you do that, the, the one thing you're examining is existence with capital. Who is it? And and like Carol said, you know, well, I think you said, what what is my purpose? Is that what you said? One of yeah, the I think humans basically have always questioned that. Like, why are we here? What is our purpose of life? Yeah, everybody, uh, I've heard that. People, people have even come to me and asked me, Greta, what is my purpose? And what I say to them, your purpose is not to be the president of the United States. Your purpose is not to be a teacher. Your purpose is not to be a prostitute. Your purpose is not to be a Tibetan monk. Your purpose is to explore this reality called life. Because the exploration that you are doing in this reality called life is the evolution of the force itself. So the purpose then becomes our evolution and the evolution of the force. So that is the purpose. Because some people think, you know, I have to be wealthy. I have to, I, I need quote unquote, need money. I need this, I need that. And it's not really, uh, this, this life experience is not about that. It's about each one of us going through our own evolution. And what is evolution? Evolution is the process of seeking further knowledge of self and your being. That's evolution. So that quote includes that concept in it. What is, what is evolution in reference to why we are here? See, some people will say, I remember one person was telling me, well, I was, uh, I've had several people tell me this. I, I was Cleopatra. And they put the was in there. So then that means that they're talking about past lives. And we know that past lives don't exist because there is no past. There is only uh, the now. But yet the person said several of them, I am Cleopatra. My response to that is there are a lot of Cleopatras, which one were you? You know, tell me which one, were you number one? Were you number two? Were you number five? Which one? Most people can't answer that. They can just say that they were generally Cleopatra because they think Cleopatra is so, uh, so famous. You know, I want to be a famous person. So therefore, I'm claiming to be Cleopatra in another life, you know. So it's like you're giving energy to the other, quote unquote, other life, which is another, would have to be another podcast to go into all of that, what's entailed in that. It's pure illusion. Absolutely. It's absolutely. Because um, everything is an illusion here. Sure. Everything. And we want to be able to, in the expansion of consciousness, uh, to embrace the idea. Just even if you begin to embrace the idea that you could possibly be the force 
you know, just enter, begin to entertain that. Because most people say, that's blasphemy. Uh, that's not real. Uh, all kinds of things to keep away from expressing yourself as the force. That's like, it's, it, it, to some people, it's such a lofty aspiration, you know, that they can't even, they would not even touch the fact of, of beginning to look at that I uh, am the creator of myself and I am the creator of everything that is in front of me, including people. And I am the creator of that which we call the gods, you know. Uh, so, and that concept, I mean, people are individuals because people are humanoids here on earth, but there are other beings elsewhere that are dealing with this whole concept as well. And they are the force because that comes the oneness. So out of that statement comes oneness. And I know we're, we're really uh, giving a lot of credence to that, to get people to begin to understand that they are one with everything that's in front of them. I don't care how the thing is presenting itself, but you're still one with it. Yeah, because everything is the force. So this search will benefit you in learning of existence. When you seek out the information internally within yourself, then you're seeking internally the force. That's where you're really going. I see you thinking, Lee, so what, what you got going in your brain? Oh, I just was thinking that, you know, if you are a Tibetan monk or a teacher or a prostitute, and that's where you are, and you think that's your purpose, and that's okay too, right? <laughs> I mean, where everyone is, is where everyone is, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Because now that raises another issue, Lee. It raises the issue of judgment and criticism. It mm -hmm. raises the issue of evil and good, bad, the concept of bad. Uh, it, it, it will bring up all of those, those things. See, because you've got to see, you've got to see past that. That, because see, each one of us, the three of us, are showing ourselves to those that are hearing, that are seeing us. So each person, when they look at each one of us, they're defining us according to their own perception. And beliefs, right? Absolutely. I mean. Absolutely. Uh, you know. Uh, and it can offer, you know, criticism, you know, uh, whatever. Somebody didn't like what I was wearing today, or why did I do my hair this way? You know, there, there can be so many things involved in that. And that puts in separation. And, and every time we talk about separation, we talk about oneness, we talk about uh, let go of criticism, let go of judgment, because as you criticize and judge, you are doing that in reference to yourself. Because that's the only way you can judge somebody. You can only judge somebody by way, by uh, by you your standards, like what Absolutely. your perception of life is, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. So seek further knowledge of self. That means going into, in, into yourself and saying, well, what's going on in here with me? What am I creating outside of myself? What does that look like? Oh. Am I at peace within myself? Or do I consider myself to be struggling every day to survive? And that's where I 
was, you know, thinking when I read this quote where the curiosity piece comes in, right? Because I mean, just this week, I had an example in my own life where I received a message and boy, was I triggered. And of course, I wanted to just say, why are they saying that to me? <laughs> Who is she to, to say those things, right? But then I said, whoa, I stopped for a minute. And I said, you're like, that's where the kind of curiosity kicked in. Like, okay, Lee, what is happening in you? What is there? You know, why are you having this? And it was a reaction. You know, it was an unconscious reaction. It wasn't a conscious response. And I, you know, normally would have um, responded, you know, with whatever unconscious thing first clicked in. And then, uh, you know, but I paused and thought about it. And my best option was to do nothing <laughs> at that moment <laughs> until I sorted it out a little better. And then it stayed that way. And then the next time I, you know, had a face-to-face -face meeting with that other, that isn't other, I just explained the situation from my point of view. And we had a good and open communication. And wouldn't you know it, there was miscommunication. And what I received was not what was intended. So, you know, that curiosity about what was going on within me, you know, really served me to not escalate things and maybe approach a situation in a different way. Perception, I think, is the key in, in everything we do. And this morning, I was thinking about judgment and how we are so automatically judging everyone. There's the expression, um, you know, your first impression of some. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know uh, Carol, sometimes her internet uh, wants to uh, create another experience for us. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> there, she comes. there she comes. You were you kind oh, of I, was there for a minute, Carol. Can you repeat that? Yeah, I was just saying about like me. First impression people, was first where. First impression. Um, how we instantly judge them. And I have personally either liked or disliked someone upon first meeting. And I now look at it as to, okay, why am I judging this? person? What don't I like about them? What do I like about them? And then I turn it inward now. And it's a way of discovering what I like and dislike about myself. Mm. Well, so that's an internal uh, reflection. Internal. Yeah. I know as a child, I remember walking, my mother and I were walking uh, in the downtown area of Chicago, because that's where I grew up. And uh, we were walking past the stores and my mother met a friend of hers. And, you know, of course they were glad to see each other and, oh, Vernicia, and oh, I can't remember the woman's name. I think I might've been about six, six or seven. And then they had a brief conversation and the woman left and went on her way. And I remember I looked up at my mother and I told her, I said, I don't like that lady. And my mother, uh, she looked down at me. She says, how can you say that? You've never met that woman before. And I said, I know, but I don't like her. So I'm saying that to say, that there's a deeper level that we function in as far as liking something or not. Because for me as a child to say, I don't like that lady. I couldn't tell my mother why. Because she asked me, I said, I just don't like her. That was, that was the only thing I could say. But that meant 
that even as a child, I was feeling the energy of the woman. And I did not like her energy. I did not know anything about, you know, looking inside myself. I thought everything was external, you know. I mean, seven or eight years old, no. But I did know that I didn't like that lady. So Greta, would that mean that you didn't, that you actually were reflecting something you didn't like about yourself at a certain level that you didn't understand yet? It would have to be. Okay. It would have to be. Because we can only see, we can only see from where we come, from where we are. And, and I'm telling that story to say children do the same thing. Oh, for sure. You know, children, just because they're children, don't think that they're not going through the same things. They're giving judgments. They're giving criticism. I judge that one. And like my mother said, I've never seen, you've never seen her. She was absolutely right. I've never seen that woman in my life and haven't seen her again. She's probably moved on into a transitional portal right now. But I do know I had to view her, even though I was a child, I had to view her through my own internal being. So we do that. So young, as youngsters, we grow up doing that. And we listen to our parents criticizing other people, criticizing neighbors, criticizing us. You know, our parents, have, I, I think if everybody thinks about a time, there's not going to be anybody in existence that has not had a parent criticize them about something. If it's, I don't like the way you wash the dishes, brush your teeth, it's going to be something. Mm -hmm. So we've learned that this is the way, this is the way how we're supposed to be. And the things that were presented by our parents are all supporting external presentations. So we don't even think about uh, internal going. things. Right. So Greta, can we maybe dive a little deeper into that? Because oh, uh, you were, you brought up uh, the, maybe something where someone would call it a gut feeling, right? You know, not something from mind necessarily, but some other feeling they got. And usually, I mean, I've heard that your gut feeling is the perhaps maybe more true reference point, right? Because it's not being influenced supposedly by mind and things. So when you were talking about it, I was a little, I guess, confused because, you know, normally we're talking here about if you see something in someone, critical, whatever, you know, good or bad, that is within you. So what do we, what do we think about this gut feeling and how do we um, reference it? You know, how do we understand it? Well, see, I think that's, that's the word you said, reference. That's a key word to, to the question you're asking me, reference. We have so many references that we are not consciously aware of. See, that quote is taking you past consciousness into unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. So in the unconscious, we've, we've talked about that the unconscious is the force, by the way, and also holds everything, everything. that has occurred. If you sneeze, <clears throat> it's there. So there's something back inside ourselves. Here we go, back inside now. We're going back inside ourselves and we're pulling this up out of the unconscious that how I felt about that lady. There's something that we're processing things. We're processing our thoughts. 
we're processing uh, our experiences that we've had along the way to assist us in determining something or reacting to something or commenting on something. It's always coming from within us. And it's about learning lessons. Absolutely. Everything is about learning a lesson. So that gut feeling, yes, on the conscious level, we say, it's just my psyche is telling me that, or my, uh, I have psychic ability, so this is my gut feeling. Don't go, or I'm listening to my um, um, angels, or I'm listening to whatever, who or, and whomever. So that is still, that listening part is still internal. The listening is still internal. The gut feeling is a production of, or it's incorporating things that you have experienced, that you have experienced, that is being stored for you, that you can go back into your, into your being and pull a gut feeling out about it. But it's there, it's all related to things that you have experienced. Okay, so how do we, I mean, do we heed those feelings? You know, oh, I'm going to take a trip somewhere and oh, I just have a bad feeling about it. So <laughs> do we, you know, is it something that we should, like a knowing that we should trust and listen to or is it something else? I'm going to give you another story when I was a child to answer this. Because my mother was going out with this gentleman who came by. They were just friends. He had a motorcycle. And my mother was going for a ride on the motorcycle. She told my great-grandfather and everybody. She told me. And I told her, I don't think you should go on that motorcycle trip. Oh, Greta, I'm going to be fine. See, now here we're going to gut now, okay? I told her, I said, Mama, I don't think you should go on the, no, nothing's happening, Greta. Everything is fine. I said, okay. So there's a quote unquote gut feeling where did I pull it from? I had to pull it from some experiences and I pulled it all together. You could call it psychic or whatever. Well, anyway, my mother just went on, went on the trip, came back and told us about the motorcycle accident that she was involved in. So it was like, oh, okay. Well, I couldn't tell my mother, I told you so not to go on that trip. You see, because you can, you can give somebody some information, but that doesn't mean that that person is going to accept that information. Why? Because they are creating their own reality and why my mother decided she wanted to have an automobile, I mean, not automobile accident, but a, be involved in a motorcycle accident. And what are accidents? Signs of anger. So that there was a lot of support for her in that experience. And regardless, me being a child or whatever, didn't, didn't matter to her. She was bent on going on a motorcycle trip. So off she went, you see. So there you go. But that was a gut feeling for me to tell her. I understand that your mom created the accident, but why did you create to have the premonition or the gut feeling? I think because as a child, I was always having those things, which if we want to, if we want to look at, I know there's a lot of people out in the audience and you include it and Lee, we all have these experiences. It's not just me. But the thing is that um, that decision 
for that was made in my back at the incarnate stage of my development. Mm. Because at the incarnate stage, that's where I chose my parents who were going to be my birth parents, who was going to give me the egg, who was going to give me the sperm so I could manifest myself in this reality. So, and when you choose your parents, you choose the lineage that you're going to be in. So I think one of the things that I had chosen to do as one as encompassing my lessons was to deal with, you know, going into healing, some area of healing. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so I had to choose the lineage that supported me in doing that. Because I, I wrote a bio for, for one of the places where I'm going to be speaking. And I said in that bio, I said, I chose to come into a family that had and used a lot of psychic abilities. I chose that. You see, so that's why when you ask me, well, how did I get to the point of doing that? That occurred back at the incarnate stage. I chose to come into a lineage. I didn't understand it. I know when I was 10, I looked at my mother and I told her, and you know, a, a black young girl in the uh, 1950s, you know, looking up at her mother and telling her, I want to be a medical doctor. I want to be a surgeon. You know, my mother just looked at me and only because she didn't know what to do. What do you do with that? But you see where, see, even at 10, I'm going in that direction. You see what I'm saying? And then my great grandfather, what I said in that bio was, I followed my great grandfather because what did he do? He would go around the South in his wagon, because we're talking about the 1800s now, his wagon going into towns with his elixirs that I'm sure that he had concocted. And people would come, they would say, well, Willie, Willie's in town, we go see him. And he used to tell me, he said, I used to take a penny, a copper penny, put it in my hands and then rub my hands really fast and make them hot. And then he said, and then I'd lay them on the ailment where the ailment was for the person. And after he would do that, he said they'd be healed. So here's that lineage I'm coming from. You see what I'm saying? So when you ask me, how did I, you know, what made me do that? It's me to, to start looking at things like that and looking at things that way. That was because of the lineage that I chose. It happens to be a lineage where there are a lot of psychic individuals on that lineage. My mother was the same way, you know. So consequently, I'm going to be the same way. I'm going to look at things. I'm not going to, I was never afraid to say that I had a quote unquote abilities. I, I, I was never afraid of that. My mother was though. She would tell me, don't tell anybody you can do those things because they're going to think you're crazy. That's what she told me. So it wasn't until another situation that I had when I thought I had seen Mother Mary. I think I told you all that story. Did I, did I ever tell you my Mother Mary story? My Mother Mary story was I was 10. I had just moved into my own bedroom. I was so happy in my great-grandfather's house. I was laying in bed. And at the school, I went to the Catholic school. They were always talking about the children of Lords, the children of Guadalupe, and how they had seen 
Mother Mary, you know, how she had appeared to them. So I was up on the second floor and I saw this, um, I saw this woman dressed with a look like Mother Mary. Because she had on the long garb with the long headdress and everything. And she was moved right in front of me, real slow, right in front of me. Came through the window on my right, moved right in front of me, just kept right on going, and out the wall on the other side. I said, hot diggity dog, I have just seen Mother Mary. I couldn't wait to go to school. I was so happy. And I, when I, I couldn't wait. To, for my mother to wake up because I wanted to tell her, you know, and I, I knew, I said, oh my God, I'm like the children and lords. I saw Mother Mary. And so I said, mama, mama, I, Mother Mary came across in my room and she went out, came through the window and went out the, the wall. And my mother said to me, she said, Greta, that is not Mother Mary. That is the woman that lives in the basement of this house. Oh, God. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Blew my thing. All right. Because I know I was going to go to school to, to tell them, look at me. I'm holier than thou. I'm holier than you because she appeared to me. She didn't appear to you. You know, because they gave you that impression in schools. Right. These were really terrific kids. You know, they had the opportunity to do that. So I wanted the opportunity to do that. So I really started as a child, just really, you know, internally. I guess I was always internal with myself because I didn't, I didn't have anybody external. You know, except to tell my my parents, you know, I tell them so and so's getting ready to die. I could tell them that, you know, and then they'd wait. And my mother eventually, uh, as I got older, she just um, she was just quiet. She was quiet when she said to me that was a woman down in the basement. Then I knew my mother had the same abilities that I had. She had activated it. Let me correct that. You have to activate those abilities. So she had activated those abilities, but she didn't want to tell anybody that she had them. And yeah, she see, died in 92 and she never did tell anybody. Why yeah. is that? Like, see, when I hear that story, I think of, oh gosh, that is the first time a mother told her child to doubt herself and not believe in what she saw or what she created because you were surrounded by that those stories so why couldn't have been <laughs> why isn't it what you saw and not the quote-unquote you know woman in the basement because see along with that one of my lessons has always been to love myself and I was taught as a child not to love myself. I've said that. Right. You, were, you were taught just there. You shared something and your mother said, no, that's not it. It's this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was taught not to love myself. I was taught not to believe in myself. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. So that was just because I learned that in the womb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we learn in the womb. I learned that in the womb. And it came out when I was, uh, you know, I've told the story of me having to have an enema, which prevented me from, uh, from not trusting myself, uh, learning that I had no control over my body. And for those who don't remember that story, and for those who are just joining us, you know, I was not even quite one yet and uh my great aunts and their mother were standing over me I was butt naked in the bed laying on my back and these tall women because as a child you know people look like they're giant huge yeah and they were telling me like um they were having a discussion about me and they were telling me about well she hasn't moved her bowels what are we going to do and all that kind of stuff 
And I was, I remember specifically thinking in my brain, no, I'm not going to do it. I don't care what you do. I'm not going to do it. So what did they do? They decided to sit me on my little potty. Because obviously, I guess I was potty trained. So I sat on the little potty. I don't know how long I was there. It seemed like it, uh, it seemed like for a, a long period of time. And I remember my uh, aunt Nanny came and she looked in, checked the pot and said, well, she has everybody shook their heads. So then they said, well, we'll have to wait for Pauline. Pauline was the nurse on the block. She was a registered nurse. And when people got sick, they would go to her. So, uh, so then um, I said to myself, I don't want, I don't want Pauline coming to bother me. So, but anyway, later on in the day, here comes Pauline. Pauline looks and she says, we're going to uh, give Greta an enema. And the only thing I kept saying was, I'm not going to get an enema. I'm not taking it. And you can't make me take it. That's exactly what I said. Then, uh, next thing I know, you know, they've spread my legs. Here comes the enema. And they stick it in me. So what, what did I learn from that? You have no bodily sovereignty. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that was when I was a child, I learned that. You see, I have no control over my body. My body does not belong to me. So consequently, um, consequently, uh, that as an adult uh, or as a a 13-year-old supported me in being sexually molested. Then at 23, it exposed me to being raped. And then later on, you know, the marriages that I had were very uh, physically abusive and emotionally abusive. So that was my lesson. That's what I had to learn. That's what I had to go through. But look when I learned, look when I learned that lesson. I couldn't even talk. And I was, and I was learning that lesson. So I learned a lot of lessons. So when you say that, you know, I don't, uh, the one lesson though, I was determined, I was not afraid of letting people know that I had activated my abilities because that was me. Now that one, I was never afraid of. My mother was. Greta, thank you for sharing that story. We're going to take a short break. So we have a little bit of time with the realm and listeners, thank you for joining us. We'll, we will be right back with Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. Hello, and welcome back to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. We've reached the point in the podcast where the realm gets to weigh in on their quotation. So let's get started. Realm, are you with us? Yep. Well, your quotation today is seek further knowledge of self and your being. This search will benefit you in learning of existence. What say you? You know, everybody's curious. Well, maybe I shouldn't say everybody, but I think everybody. Uh, At some part of your life, I'm not saying that you are consistently doing it. But at some part in your life, you've been curious. And you've said, who am I? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing with my life? You know. So that that quote that we wrote, that that's uh uh, giving you an opportunity, it's encouraging you to look and see who you are. You know, some people are so worried about everybody else. You know, like loving. I want somebody, I want a lover, or I want a husband, I want a maid, I want to love somebody, I want to love my children. You see. 
They want to know about how this other person is. But there's a tendency to not look at self. To not even think about looking at self. Because when some people look at themselves, they don't like themselves. They don't like what they see. They don't like what their body looks like. Or they feel that I'm not successful. They look at all of those things. I wish I had done this because now look at me, I have nothing. Or I wish that I had bought that house when I thought about it. So then you beat up on yourselves. Well, I made a bad mistake. There's no bad mistake. There's no mistake. You see, having gone through a mistake is an illusion. So that is a quote from us to support you in looking into yourself. Be courageous. You have to be courageous to look at yourself. Because like we said before, some people don't like what they see. You see, don't love themselves, demean themselves, place themselves in situations where they can be constantly punished. Look at people in prisons. They've created to incarcerate themselves for long periods of time. You see, or people who don't want to face the realities of this world that they have created. They want to blame the creations on somebody else. You did this to me. That's all the opposite of seeking internally. You make some, and some people even make that which we call God or Allah or Yahweh is the responsible one, you know. You had a, um, a uh, comedian who used to say, the devil made me do it, you know. So some of their actions, actions are always taken externally. The first thing that we want people to learn is that everything happens within you, not outside of you, in you the decision-making, the creation of reality, the choices, that's all internal. But if you choose something that you go and say, why did I choose that? Don't beat up on yourself because you did that. Just change it. No, that's that's the knowingness of inside you, that you can change things anytime you want to. That's how, that's why it's saying uh, learn existence with the capital E as Greta said, learn existence, learn that you are in control of it. And we say that over and over and over again. Every podcast, we always say something about that because it takes time to realize that. You have to be brave. You, you want to be courageous to look at yourself. Realm? Yes? Can you tell us about how we might find our inner strength, you know, our, our inner balance to be able to look at ourselves with honesty. There is so many ways you can do that. 
Tell us some. <laughs> some people will go the route of religion. They will go that route. They will go to church every day. They will pray to whomever they feel that their religion supports to be prayed to. They will do that. And they will think that that individual has control enough to change their lives. You see, so that's one way. They will thoroughly believe this, this divine entity will save me. So when they create to be saved and however they create it, they're not going to believe that they created it because they don't think that they that they have that power. So therefore they're going to say, I prayed and God granted me my wish. That's what they will say. And that's okay if you believe that. But eventually you're going to go through the process of learning bit by bit that you are the creator of your reality. Not that supreme being. And then you're going to learn that not only are you the creator of your reality, but you are the creator. That force that you say, God, Allah, Yahweh, Buddha, the Christ, all of those individuals and more because we could go into uh, Oshun. We could go into all of those belief systems that support outwardness. But that's okay, because that's where you are at that time. So Lee, to go internal takes time. It takes time for you to say to yourself, okay, there must be something else. Let me go search. You see, and then you'll search within your confines, like people who are Christians say, I want to search. So they go to Buddhism, some form of Buddhism. Some people may say, I want to embrace Judaism. So they do that, staying within the confines of religion. And then when you go through that, then you're going to move and say, there might be something else. Let me look at that. Then you get exposed to and you create to and bring to yourself people who expand you past a religious edict. So it's a journey, Lee. It's not something that you can turn around and say, okay, here I'm right here in this spot. I know I'm the force. There are people listening to this podcast that probably think that um, this realm of being doesn't know what he's talking about. He's trying to tell me that I'm the force. They don't, they don't want to hear that. They, so it's a process of changing, consciously changing yourself with the support of the unconscious. Realm, we have, time. okay, so time. Well, I thank you for sharing your wisdom with us again this week. Thank you, Carol, for joining us and Greta. And as always, we thank our listeners for joining us for the hour. This has been Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings until we create each other again. Be well. Once again, thanks for joining us at Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
as you have explored today's creation of reality experience with the realm and me greta each of you is being supported by us in further developing the understanding that you are not just an individual existing in linear time and space but a multi-dimensional force of infinite possibilities who is connected to all so begin to create the realities you want Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time and 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Shifting Impressions at TransformationTalkRadio.com. So long until we create each other again next Friday.